Hello and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week, as you know, hosting this show, meeting interesting people, dealing with topical issues, and today a subject we have come to again and again, and that's the health of Oklahomans, and we have a really uh, uh, expert uh, on our show today. Well, we have the leading expert in <laughs> Oklahoma, certainly, and probably beyond our borders in Dr. Gary Roscob, who is the dean of the Hudson College of Public Health uh, at the University of Oklahoma med Medical Complex. Uh, uh, we're really pleased he'd come mm -hmm. talk to us about uh, public health. What's it mean? How are we doing? Uh, we know what COVID has done to us, but there are probably a lot of other things he can talk about that impact the topic of public health. He was just recently involved in the publish publication of a new book on uh, kind of the state of health in Oklahoma. And what we might do about it, where are the trouble spots, and we'll get into all that today on The Verdict. We'll see you in a little bit. Right now, six feet can feel like a long ways away. But from six feet, we can still smile at each other from our doorways and our stairways, from opposite sides of the street and opposite sides of the country, through fear and frustrations. We can remind each other that we are still here for each other because we can still smile at each other and we're not going anywhere. Military service ran in my blood, starting from my father, which joined the Navy, on the Chickasaw side, my uncle, which served in the United States Army. I'm Benjamin Espinosa, Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, and I'm Chickasaw. I went to the Secretary of Defense's staff at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., which ultimately led to becoming a combat support technician for Naval Special Warfare, specifically SEAL Team 10. I think to be proud and to love your tribe, to love being Chickasaw, you also have to love being American. You also have to love everything that America stands for, equality, perseverance, professionalism, and power. I want my family to know that their father is a good person, but also feels that he has an obligation to the country and to love this nation. Anything worth having is worth dying for. The military and the country owes me nothing. I owe it everything. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at profilesofanation.com. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We are really pleased today to have Dr. Gary Roscob, the Dean of the Hudson College of Public Health at the University of Oklahoma, join us as our guest, talking about public health generally and public health in, in Oklahoma. Uh, Dr. Uh, Roscob uh, did his uh, master's degree work at the uh, University of Ontario uh, in Canada, did his PhD work at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, his area of medical interest is deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism problems. Uh, he is a real expert in that area, has written a lot about it, has talked, has uh, 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 lectured a lot about it, and is recognized uh, nationally in that area as an expert. Uh, he is uh, a prolific writer, prolific teacher, and lecturer, uh, and uh, has, uh, as a matter of fact, had 18 of his articles published by the uh, New England Journal of Medicine, uh, quite a prestigious publication. Uh, we're really pleased he joined us. This is his first visit to the verdict. Uh, Dr. Roscob, glad to have you. Uh, hello. Uh, good. Thank you for the opportunity to visit with you today. And I know you are involved with the publication of a new book. Tell us more about it. Great, thank you. Well, uh, it was really a pleasure uh, to work on our book. It's called Oklahoma Pride, Working Together. Uh, here you can see it for the well-being of all Oklahomans. The book really was the brainchild of a great community leader in Oklahoma City, Mr. Gene Rainbow, who approached me and said, you know, I continue to be concerned about the health of our population how can we get the message across uh, about the need to do something? And maybe 
we can go about it differently and use art as a mechanism to communicate with people. And so uh, Jean engaged us and through a partnership with our work at the college and with the Weizenhofer College of Fine Arts at, uh, in Norman, um, we tasked a, a senior class in visual arts to uh, address a few specific public health challenges in Oklahoma by creating visual images about uh, how they visioned uh, our, our status of health at the present time and what their vision for the future would be uh, with respect to where we'd like to go. And that really, though, all of that art was synthesized into the book. And then we put around that some of the data, concise summaries of data and, and, and information. But the focus was getting the, the uh, vision of our young people, the 19, 20, 21 year olds, with respect to their current thinking about where Oklahoma sits and a vision for a positive vision for future. Where are the, what are the takeaways of the book? Pardon? What are the takeaways of the book? What, what, yeah. What's the overall theme? The, the, the main theme is that, um, that when we think of health, we have to think about much more than health care, that health really, our health as a population is driven by more upstream factors, by education, by economic development, by poverty, and the opportunities we create for people, and that we cannot think of education, health, and economics as separate silos, but we have to bring our, our efforts together and work on all three of those at the same time because they're so interconnected. Uh, doctor, how long have you been at OU Medicine and how long have you been head of the Hudson College? I'm sorry, the audio is a little bit scratchy for me, so please repeat that. Sure. How long have you been at OU? Okay, yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I really... Um, this uh, past August, I celebrated my 30th anniversary at the University of Oklahoma, <laughs> moved here in 1991, and um, boy, time flies, and I'm, I'm really honored to have served as dean of the college for the last 20 years. And is the, is the name Hudson in the College of Medicine, uh, uh, does it designate a particular individual? Yeah, our college was named... Uh, in recognition of a very generous gift from two um, great civic leaders in Oklahoma City, uh, Dr. Leslie Hudson and uh, Mr. Cliff Hudson. Uh, you may know the, the former CEO of Sonic, an individual who contributed an enormous amount to, um, for example, leading uh, education in Oklahoma. Leslie has been an outstanding community volunteer of many of the most important uh, nonprofit organizations in the city and state. And, the two of them really, uh, through a very generous gift, uh, was is whom we recognize with the yeah. Hudson College of Public Health. How does um, how does poverty and low income play into pub public health across the state? Uh, it's really a critical factor. It's a driving factor because um, people um, income. Uh, there's an, a wealth of evidence which shows that income is one, your income and your socioeconomic status. Socioeconomic status really refers to, uh, you know, uh, the education and income status of your parents and yourself. Um, those are drivers of life expectancy. Uh, and it's very clear that increasing income is associated with uh, increasing life expectancy, right? A continuous relationship. And ultimately, of course, what drives and determines that is education, um, but also uh, opportunities that people have for uh, good jobs, for a, a good job that uh, gives you an income such that you uh, either have through your job health insurance or you can afford to buy it, that you live in a, a safe neighborhood and a neighborhood that is, uh, has you know, a, a good quality air and water and lack of pests and so on in your housing. Um, that you can afford transportation to go where you need to go. And, and just, it, it drives so much. It's so crucial that, um, that, that that's a big determinant of, of health in our state. Well, let me ask you about uh, how our municipalities are doing. My next question after that will be how are the rural areas doing, but how are Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Lawton, Enid, 
and the like doing in providing public safety, jobs, and the like to increase the likelihood of a good public health outcome? Well, I think um, I'm, you know, I think there's the issue of how we're doing with respect to COVID. And it's clear uh, that we were challenged, of course, with the, you know, public health emergency of the last century. Um, and there is a clear uh, divergence between rural and, and urban Oklahoma in that area. But, you know, public health, uh, as much as COVID is brought to the attention of people, public health, and it's been a threat that we're, we're finally now seeming to have some, um, you know, reduction in the number of cases and so on, and, and hopefully that will continue. There's much, much more to public health than just COVID. And so things like um, cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke, uh, issues like cancer, those are major, major uh, killers and causes of disability and death in Oklahoma. Um, and overall, we're just not doing well across the state, whether it's urban or um, or rural, but even if we just look at Oklahoma City, for example, um, across the zip codes in Oklahoma City, there's a, a more than 15 year difference in life expectancy between the worst zip code and the best zip code. That should not happen in a in a in in the United States and in our state in, in 2021, um, and that is driven by poverty and, and opportunity, lack of education and income. And the rural areas. Dr. Roscoe. Yeah. Well, and the rural areas also are, uh, are challenged very significantly. Again, you, in, during the last couple of years, we learned that some of our counties are among the worst life expectancy in the entire United States. Um, and that is driven heavily by what many of the public health scientists have ca called the, the diseases of despair or you know, lack of opportunity, uh, mental health issues, uh, substance abuse, addiction, the opioid epidemic has played an important role in that, and and just hopelessness and lack of lack of thinking of opportunity. So uh, some of our rural areas uh, have been very very hard hit. Others are doing a little better, um, but it all comes back to education and creating opportunity for individuals. What should the state be doing that it's not doing today? Well, um, in public health overall, I think we need to to really strengthen our investment in education. We need to have we need to raise literacy um, amongst the population in general. That means we need to give them practical skills and understanding what determines their health. That much of our health is driven by behavioral choices, um, smoking, um, responsible use of alcohol. Um, not using uh, substances or abusing substances that are harmful, responsible sexual practices. All of these things are important and education on those things. I think we need to strengthen that throughout our, our, our curriculum from K to 12. Uh, we can address some of our challenges through policy. Tobacco continues to be a major, major problem. It is overrepresented in individuals of lower education and income. And we could, we could eliminate, for example, 80% or more of lung cancer if we just had a much stronger policy on tobacco. And the best way to do that is to raise the tax on tobacco because it's a barrier to entry for middle, middle school kids, which is the place where people begin to smoke. And if there was one thing, if you could say you could only, only do one thing, one choice in your life for your health, it's hands down, far and away, the most important is choose not to smoke. Dr. Gary Roscob is our guest. He uh, is very much involved at the uh, health of the state of Oklahoma through his position at the Hudson College of Public Health. We'll be back more with uh, Dr. Roscob in just a moment. We want to reach out to every veteran we can in Oklahoma. There's somewhere around 340,000 veterans here in Oklahoma, and half of those are still unaware of the benefits or don't know how to go about getting them. 
we help guide the veterans through the VA system. It's a, it's a giant maze, and we kind of help guide them through that maze. So our job is to try to help the veterans get everything that they're legally entitled to. There's just a special place in my heart for our Vietnam veterans and our World War II veterans, as well as any veteran, and that's why I do the job. OU Law has a history and heritage that are unparalleled. At the University of Oklahoma College of Law, we empower our students to pursue the career of their dreams. We have the highest U.S. news ranking ever achieved by an Oklahoma law school. We are the first law school in the country to launch a college-wide digital initiative. And this year, our competition teams rank number two in the nation. OU Law, generations of excellence, limitless possibilities. Welcome back to the set of the verdict. We're visiting with uh, Dr. Gary Roscob, um, who is uh, with the Hudson College of Public Health. And uh, Dr. Roscob, you know, around the world, there are countries that are healthier than the United States. That might surprise some. Why would that be? Why? Why? What are other countries doing that we're not doing here? Yeah, no, a, a great point, by the way, just if we compare to similar countries, countries of similar economic development, and wealth to the United States. The United States spends more on healthcare, almost twice as much as a proportion of our GDP of many of these countries and has worse outcomes. And the reason dominantly is that we are, are uh, many reasons, but dominantly that we're not focusing on prevention and investing more at the upstream uh, levels to uh, give our citizens the tools and knowledge to prevent uh, disease and to maintain wellness, but also, um, we, you know, we have a high rate of uninsurance. We end up treating many people late in the course of disease when we could have better outcomes by dealing with that earlier. So we absolutely need to work to get to having every every Oklahoman and every American have uh, some form of access to healthcare through health insurance. All, all of these other countries do that. But they invest much, much more in um, social support as well of, uh, of lower income uh, individuals. Uh, doctor, uh, is the COVID uh, crisis uh, the most single most uh, difficult issue you've had to deal with in the area of public health? Yeah, absolutely. I think all of us know that, I mean, this has been a, a, a generational and a lifetime challenge. Um, and um, it's unfortunate um, that this happened. Um, and, and, you know, um, importantly, I hope that we will learn from this and really prepare better for the future. Dr. Roscoe, I wonder how allergies play into the overall public health in Oklahomans. It's my perception that allergies have a higher prevalence here in our state? And if so, how does that filter into the other things we're talking about today? Well, uh, well just most acutely, yes, Oklahoma does have high burden from allergic disease and the various things that are um, uh, in our air. Um, and at the moment, it's very important in the context of COVID because as the new Delta variant emerged, um, you've probably read or had some prior People talking about that, the that that the timing of that, which happened in in our summer and and through to now, overlaid right on top of a, a time when we have a lot of allergies, and so uh, the danger was that people would attribute symptoms um, like sneezing and watering eyes and sore throat and coughing and other things just to allergies, when in fact they may well have been. Uh, uh, you know, contributed to by COVID. So it created confusion and challenges in, in diagnosis for practitioners on the front line and sorting out patients. Um, and of course, um, allergies just are a challenge for people in, in quality of life, but they were, uh, they, and they have been and will, and will continue to be important in the context of COVID. I think the advice would be, if you're having uh, some of these symptoms and other things, and, they, and they're a, a little bit different or unusual, um, then you know, don't hesitate to get tested for COVID. I noticed, uh, and I think I mentioned in your introduction, that 
one of the areas of interest that uh, you have been involved in involves deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolisms. Uh, where does Oklahoma stand in relation to those two problems? Well, um, uh, those problems uh, are, are dominantly not a condition of lifestyle or other issues. These are deep vein thrombosis refers to blood clots in the veins of the leg, which can then travel and move into the lungs. This can be fatal. Um, it is a very common condition. It's a condition that's given, uh, that has not gotten the same level of attention as heart attack or stroke, even though we anticipate between 100 to 300,000 deaths from this condition in the United States each year. Many of those are preventable. Two main groups of people get these clots. One is it occurs as a complication of hospitalization or surgery or cancer in many patients. However, about 30 to 40% of patients have a genetic predisposition to this and just spontaneously develop these clots. With regard to the larger group of about 60 to 70% where this may occur as a complication of hospital or so forth, I think the important message is we need to work well on prevention. Fortunately, we have effective preventive measures. We need to make sure they're implemented. If you're a person who's being admitted to hospital or having surgery, do one simple thing. Ask your attending doctor or surgeon, am I at risk for developing a blood clot and should I get some preventive measures? And if we do a great job on that, we'll markedly reduce the burden of this, uh, this disease. What are the misperceptions about health in the state of Oklahoma? That, that you know, somebody comes up to you uh, with a conclusion that, that you would disagree with? I, I know there's a lot of perceptions out there. What do we have right and what do we have wrong? Um, well, I think the first thing is getting is, is a great start today to what we're talking about is that health is not just health care. It's driven by many other things. That secondly, all the policies we do in public policy have the potential to influence health. So we should always be taking into consideration the, the impact on health when we develop new policy, such as urban planning, where we place our schools, is it conducive to walking to school? Many, many ramifications will influence health. I think some have the perception, and I worried about this a little bit with the book, um, because Oklahoma has been ranking so badly that, it, that, that our purpose is not just to keep telling people we're doing badly, but, but we have to recognize where we are to improve. But I think we, we don't want people to conclude there's no hope or, or no way to change this. There is through organized community efforts. That's what public health is. It's the organized effort to create conditions by which our community is healthy. That means we need to engage private business we need to engage community nonprofit organizations, and we need to use uh, effectively our state and local governments all working together uh, for these things because different aspects of the problem have different elements of solution, either policy or community programs or roles that business can play. Well, Dr. Roscob, uh, congratulations on the book. I hope it gets widely distributed and I hope Oklahomans read it and, uh, and start to take better care of themselves going on. I, as we close the show, I want to just uh, put in a, a, a brief uh, opportunity for you to speak on the way that women are treated in the state of Oklahoma and how the status of women in this state plays into the overall health picture. Well, I, I saw your quote. Of course, women, women are critical to health. Much of our um, continued family responsibility, child raising, and so on continues to be with, with the women. Um, I think we, we need to be very thoughtful and make sure that, uh, that we take care of, of women and the critical role that they play. And I think importantly, one of the areas we really need to work on is our infant mortality and to make sure that, that we get good prenatal care to uh, pregnant women. I think we need to do a much better job about educating our young people about um, responsible sexual behavior and uh, appropriate contraception, that they at least have the facts to make their choice. And if we do that, we will, we will prevent teen pregnancies, which are a, a really major contributor to poverty. poverty. Um, so I think, again, it all comes back to empowering people with knowledge and education to make the right choice. He is Dr. Gary Roscob. And uh, Kent, I'll have a final word when we get back. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Pleasure.
It used to be okay in hospitals. It used to be okay in movie theaters. It was okay in classrooms, restaurants, and airplanes. But thanks to a greater understanding of the dangers, that's not okay anymore. So now that we know secondhand smoke causes lifelong health problems, why is it still okay to smoke with children in the car? Bottom line, it's not okay. Let's get serious about protecting kids. Join the fight at StopsWithMe.com. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. We have uh, uh, children coming from a different lifestyle, different mindset. You have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we try to do with these kids. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Dr. Roscoe pointing out so many relevant uh, things about Oklahoma's health and what we can do about it. Yeah, very articulate, uh, certainly a wonderful person to be in charge of the Hudson uh, College of, of uh, Public, Public Health. health. And uh, uh, let me give you some website information. Uh, Dr. Roscoe's uh, department, OUHSC.edu. That's OUHSC.edu. And we have a website, theverdict.tv. You can log on, tell us about a guest you'd like to see or a topic you'd like to see discussed. And maybe we'll get to it next week. See you then.